Well, Erica, thank you so much for joining us live here on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. It's a great honor, and I'm thrilled to have you here. I'm so excited to hear what you've got to talk to us about, which is all about IGTV. I am thrilled, thrilled, thrilled. But more importantly, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, and what it is that you're doing? I'm Erica with ePartners Marketing. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Henriette. I'm Hello, you're welcome. So excited to share with your um, audience. I was going to say your client. Well, your clients and your audience about IGTV. So how I got started was I worked at really big agencies here in the U.S. doing marketing and design, and then I went or not marketing and design, but doing marketing and customer relations type stuff. And then I ended up getting promoted to being a um, analyst, but it was so boring being an analyst. So then I wanted to go into design. Everything that I was looking at reports about, I ended up transferring into design. And then I worked at another agency, and then I just started my own agency, and the rest is history. That's how I got into what I do now. That's amazing. So um, with your background, who is it in particular that you're serving? Who, what clients or customers are you looking after in particular? So I have two different client bases. My client base for ePartners Marketing would be an entrepreneur or a small team that, you know, they're too busy to do their marketing and design and they feel overwhelmed. So then my team comes in and we help them get clear and effective with their marketing and design. And then my other market for just design through my Etsy store, um, that would be like bloggers, YouTubers, solopreneurs, or maybe they do have a team, but they just want just design. I don't do any marketing over there. It's just design. So those are my two different Two different markets. That's fantastic. Now, with any entrepreneur, I know, in particular for my audience as well, they always just so fascinated, and it fascinates me even till today. I'm always just intrigued about how people get started. What is the passion behind them making that change and basically taking that leap of faith and just starting your own business? Now, for you in particular, when you got started, what is that passion? What was the drive behind it all to get moving? So while I was at one of these really big agencies I was working at, I started a blog about marketing and design. And then I had business owners asking me questions about it and then have started getting requests about it. And I had a really good um, business friend. He's way older than me, but he was really influential in that, that he was one of my first clients. He told me I should start the business. And he brought me my first few clients as well. So um, that's what really pushed me into it. I had wanted to, I had been researching for a while about starting a business. I just didn't know what to do or how to really start. You know, there's so much info out there about starting a business. Yeah. But then when I started designing and then people started requesting, then it just, you know, made sense for me to offer it to them and all that. So that's how I got into it. And that's good because you kind of like, you know, what you're passionate about, which is design in particular. And you've just kind of incorporated that and just, it took off from there onwards. So like yes. said, the sky's your limit and you just went for it. <laughs> yes. So um, when, you, um, when you started your business, you obviously started um, working or you were then, you know, an analyst, but you felt that that wasn't really your niche. And then from there, you just moved on into digital marketing and creating your own business. And from your point of view, now that you are looking after so many other customers or clients doing their marketing for them, and, and we'll talk about that now in particular as well, is, is what did you feel stood out in the marketing field? And I think you're going to say IG, I, I, in other words, Instagram. But um, what was kind of like your take on that? How did you develop and realize that IGTV was kind of taking off? So... I noticed that IGTV had been around for a good year or so, and I saw other people, you know, I'm not on the back end, so I don't know, you know, what their sales look like and stuff like that. I noticed that they were getting so many views, and then, you know, I just tried it one day, and then, you know, I kept, like, once a week with my own um, company doing it. But then I actually, let me back up. So we had a client that was transitioning from being a therapist and humanitarian into an author and a speaker. So we knew that she looked really, really good on camera. She had a few IG and Facebook Live she'd done in the past, 
but we wanted, as part of her strategy, we wanted to make it more consistent. So for her, we did, and it really helped. Her audience has connected with her since starting it, and they look forward to it. Each Wednesday and each Friday, she'll do an IGTV where she pre-records it, but they think it's really on that day, and she gets so much interaction. Even with my own business, when I do an IGTV, I get two to three really, really good leads or pot um, potential clients from doing my IGTV. They get curious about what I'm talking about, and they'll DM me or they'll email me asking me for help or, you know, oh, telling me about the design project they have or the marketing they need. So it really does help. It makes a difference. And, and, and in particular for you, why did you decide – to transition and to start using IGTV. What was that particular moment where you went like, oh, I'm gonna try this out? <laughs> so I had tried IG live before and it was not, I completely bombed. <laughs> like maybe one or two people were on there and it was just weird talking to just, oh, I mean, either way you're kind of talking to yourself, but I really liked how the IGTV could be pre-recorded, you could do it from your phone, you didn't have that much editing, and then it could be bite-sized. Like, it could be a minute to five minutes long and still get the point across or help my audience, you know, take one actionable step and get a quick win versus with IG Live, you know, it's as long as the people are on there. Yes. <laughs> you know, that could, an IG Live can go on for hours if you let it. So I, that's what made me um, want to try it out. And then the first one was me and my daughter – what happened was I had clients that were debating, you know, should I show my products or should I show people using my products on Instagram? Like they were very confused about what sort of images they should use. And me being the designer, making their designs, it was like, okay, you know, I was saying this, but they were thinking that. So then that's when me and her, me and my little girl um, made a cute video just saying, you know, would you buy a toy that you didn't see a little kid playing with? And she's like, no. So I'm like, yeah, see, she's five years old and she knows that <laughs> you have to show people using your product. So very simplistic, you know, educational bite-sized video, but everyone resonated with it. They're like, oh, well, you know, they had the aha moment of, yeah, I've got to show people using my product. That's so. amazing. That is really fantastic. It is such a cute little story. Yeah. So, um, just from you, um, because I know you also said one of the things that you like doing in particular is when you do IGTV, you get a lot more people sending you direct messages or contacting you from there. Um, now, I know it's different for so many different audiences and also niches or industries, but from your point of view, when you started doing IGTV, did you immediately off the cuff start people sending you direct messages or was that more or less because you were consistent and that just started building up before you start getting people repetitively coming back to you and sending you DMs? So I would say consistency because even if I don't do an IGTV, I still do an IG story. Like each day I try to do a few IG stories, um, just showing them, you know, behind the scenes of a project or an email blast or I'm talking to a client you know, sometimes I make them fun social where it's, you know, me out and about at a restaurant or at a networking event, something like that. But, yeah, if I'm consistent with IG stories, then the IGTV is just, okay, this is the time I'm going to educate you on something or give you a bite-sized tip. But mm -hmm. IG stories is, like, all the time. So they're so used to seeing me on IG stories. And the thing about that is, any type of video is connecting you with them, like instant connection. They see you moving. They know you're who you said you were or who, you know, they've been seeing in the pictures. So to see you in motion just does something to your audience. So it builds that connection. So them seeing me in stories all the time, you know, they, they ask questions a lot in stories too. They'll DM me reacting to stories. So that IGTV once a week is just an aha moment just to reassure them, <laughs> basically. Because in my stories, I don't go that in depth giving tips. So yeah, no, indeed. Tips, and then the IG stories is behind the scenes kind of stuff. That's really good. And then from your point of view, um, are you on Facebook as well? Do you do Facebook Lives and those kind of things as well in, in, in relation to IG stories? Or are you solely just focusing on IGTV and IG stories? 
So that's a great question, Henriette. What I do is I'll share my IGTV to my Facebook. I don't do Facebook Lives. That's something I need to roll out before the end of the year. I would like to. Um, <laughs> it's just I've never tried Facebook Live. I have done mm -hmm. Instagram Live, but never Facebook Live. So that's something I have to try. When yeah. you do Facebook Live, um, how often do you do Facebook Lives? I try and do once a week. So every Wednesday I have uh, Facebook groups and then every Wednesday they get to hear from me and, and I talk about a topic. And then yes, it's like you say, sometimes people are there and they watch you live or sometimes they're not there, but they always can catch the replay afterwards. I think it's still just important to keep that consistency going, um, which is absolute key. But then from, from your point of view, um, if you are linking your IGTV and Facebook in particular, they get, do they get paid, put on your Facebook page or on your personal page? How does that work? Yes, it goes to my Facebook business page. Business page. Okay, because I know sometimes people are going, oh my gosh, I don't want it on my personal page. I want it on my business yes. page. <laughs> It's, it's funny because I do have a lot of friends on Facebook, but yeah, they're not necessarily my target market, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So from your point of view, what kind of, are you using a particular strategy in order to make sure that you are consistent on Instagram? And, and if you would like to share a little bit about what you do, what is your kind of strategy in order to keep consistent? So... For me and my clients, I like to have like just different, um, depending on what their goal is, I'll know how many posts they need to do to reach that goal. So that's mm -hmm. kind of what I do. For my own self, you know, I should really practice what I preach. I post more for my clients than I do for myself. But what I'm, just like you said with the strategy, I try to really hone in on what am I getting asked so much. Mm -hmm. And then I just break it up into bite-sized pieces. Like it might be a, a text graphic one day, a picture picture of me but then the caption is kind of you know telling a story and giving them a tip and then the IGTV that week would kind of be you know a more in-depth take on that tip or you know how they can do it too or just thought-provoking something like that sometimes my IGTVs are thought-provoking sometimes they're tips sometimes they're just you know just talking about oh I was asked this question this day this answer <laughs> so <laughs> just depends but um, yeah it's basically Anything that I keep hearing over and over, it's like, okay, well, if these two people are saying it. I've got, I just hit 800 followers. So I'm like, oh, out of these 800 followers that are mostly business owners, I'm like, okay, probably 10 other people have the same question. So then I just go ahead and put it out there. Yeah. And no, I TV. That, that's really amazing. And I think it's so good as well because once you have that interaction and you start getting the feedback and you see what people are actually saying, well, that's where you can get a bit more clear on your message as well. You can give those tips better, yeah. et cetera. So that's really, really, really strong. Now, if I can ask, do you have a couple of lessons that you've learned um, yourself going through business, starting up, getting moving, helping other people in, in your industry? Are there a couple of tips or a couple of lessons that you would like to share with everyone? So definitely one lesson would be, this is what me and Gabby were talking about the other day, but definitely collaboration over competition. You know, you can learn something from everyone, even if you all are in similar industries. Um, there might be something that that person, a tool or a way of doing something that that person has that you could incorporate, and then there's something that you could offer them too, to where they could run their business smoother or attract more clients. Because there is someone in particular I'm thinking about on my IG um, we're not in the same exact industry. She has a very niche clientele, which I'm not even serving them. She does mm -hmm. healthcare professionals, but she does a lot of Instagram lives. And I think watching her be so consistent with her Instagram lives kind of gives you the courage to, you know, start doing them too. So I would mm -hmm. say that. And then another lesson would be with IGTV, do not take um, the YouTube video and then slap it right on Instagram because there's things that people say on YouTube that people just don't say on Instagram. So it's kind of funny. Um, but I would say too, like, there's no real rules with IGTV. There really isn't. You could do a behind the scenes. You could do a tour of, like, if it's a real estate agent, a tour of their community. There's no rules. You make the rules as you go. But just, you know, being consistent, you'll see, um, a lot more interaction and then also I would say like good practice for IGTV if you're nervous about any type of video on your main feed 
Um, Instagram stories is a great way to practice, you know, just doing a few a week or once a week, you know, that way it won't be a chore. It'll be fun because people will start interacting with you. And then when you watch other people's stories, you know, and you start interacting with them, they'll interact with you back. So that's what I would say. Yeah. No, that's really good. Um, yeah, I mean, from my point of view, like I said earlier on before we started this recording, is I haven't been that active on Instagram. I've only recently started, and I've just now seen kind of the benefits of, you know, continuously putting things yes. out on Instagram. So when we sp spoke about doing IGTV, I got really excited, and I thought, oh, my gosh, this is going to be the next step for me. So for you, where you do Facebook Lives, <laughs> yes, we should swap some more tips around. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this is where I need to get more consistent, is doing IGTV. And also my stories. I don't do any stories at the moment. And um, and actually, I've recently, um, I'm doing um, Amy Portersfield's email list building, List Builders Lab. And one of the wow. things she kept on saying on there was, you know, go on Instagram and do um, stories and things like that. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. So if any of you are listening, please, please, please go out there and start using Instagram if it's not one of the platforms you are using. Just start slowly incorporating it because the benefits are there. You will see a lot more growth. Um, but don't put all your eggs in one basket. So that being said, don't try and do everything just on one platform. Give yourself two or three platforms um, in the social environment in order to make sure that you get a better reach. Um, Erica, now, <laughs> I mean, we've, we've been speaking about IGTV, IGTV, but I wanted to ask you, you were specifically talking about this one client of yours who um, is a therapist. And I was wondering if you can just tell us a little bit more about the story, because I read about it and I heard what you said before. But what is it that you found um, in particular with your client? And maybe you can use another example if you want to. But if they come to you and they say, listen, I, I need to to expand my view ratings, my reach. What is the first thing you look at? What is the first thing you as your business look at in order to help them then take the next step? And maybe if you have another example rather than the, the example of your your customer who's the therapist who had a book launch, that would be fantastic. So the first thing we do with all of our clients is we look at what their current activities is are <laughs> what their current activities are. So we do like a brand audit with them and we look at all their social media, personal and business to see, okay, is there some stuff we can take from here, like curate content that way yeah. we don't have to make so much new content. And so with her, that's one thing we did. We really looked at what she had and she had so much content to work with. She was trying to make brand new content all the time. And it was like, but you have this great content from, you know, a year or so ago that we could definitely share again for like a flashback Friday or a throwback Thursday. That way when those fun social threads are going on, you know, she could still participate because a lot of businesses don't do a throwback Thursday or a flashback Friday. But That's her really being true. a personal brand, she could do that and she could do it on both. So she has two Instagrams, one for business and one for um, her personal brand, you know. So it was really cool. Like we could hit people two times <laughs> with the same That's stuff, funny. more than two times, because then she had a Twitter and a Facebook. And then she mm -hmm. had a personal Facebook and a business Facebook. So mm -hmm. it was really cool that during that project, we were able to use content she already had, make some new content, mix them in together so it looked really aesthetically pleasing. And it really helped her. Now she's attracting a lot of opportunities to her. Another mm -hmm. example, would be a hair product business, natural hair product business out of Chicago. I've been working with that lady consistently since February, but she's actually a client I've had since 2017. And um, with her strategy, she does IGTVs, but hers is more behind the scenes, making the products, showing moms and dads how to use the products with their kids. Hers are more tutorials. Not really Q and A's. Maybe she'll do Q and A's in the future, but that's her strategy. Um, but then, just you know, with my piece and her big old puzzle, it's you know making the very pretty, you know, informational posts for her, and then also you know giving her my 
advice on how to make it all flow together. Yeah. So those two clients in particular, Instagram's really, really good for them. I'm thinking about a cosmetics client I have. When we did her launch, um, it was making the feed cohesive and getting her on a consistent schedule. She's so busy with other things, so we're trying to get that consistent. But yeah. I would say that's first. Me and Anaya, my, my partner, my team member, she's the PR girl slash social media. So um, we build strategies for our clients, but before we do any strategy, we definitely take a deep dive into, okay, what do they have going on? Yeah. Does it match what's on their website? Do all the social medias look like it's the same account? Especially when customers work with different designers. They can look totally different. Nothing wrong with that. Change happens. But you just want to keep in mind as you move forward that the website and the social media and your email blast, even a small thing as your um, email signature and your business cards and your flyers and your brochures, you want to make sure everything goes together. Yeah. That way when you meet someone and you give them your business card and it's awesome and then they look at your Instagram and it's awesome, it's like, okay, cool. You know, yeah. it sucks when you go like like a platform like this, like with the humanitarian slash therapist. She goes on a lot of podcasts. She goes on news shows. She speaks at conferences. So it was so vital that her stuff be cohesive. So that's the first yeah. thing we do. Sorry, it took you long winded. Yeah, no, no, I I love it. I love how you how you explain everything because it makes so much sense. I mean, that's part of your brand. That's you know, that's your name, that's your face. Everything needs to correlate. Everything needs to look, not the same, but they need to at least match. <laughs> yes, they need to look like they're the same account. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's so important as well from what you're saying, because in particular, people would always say, well, what do I do on IGTV? What kind of stories do I need to put out there? But it's like you say, anything goes. You can absolutely put anything out there. As long as it is in some sense, um, you know, either where you can help people, where you're giving tips, or you're giving a little bit behind the scenes of something that you're working towards. It is so, so important. How do you feel about um, when you do IGTV as an example? Um, do you always have a CTA at the end as well where you give a call to action? I need to get better at that. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Usually I'll say, um, at the end, I'll say something like, if you want to learn more about you know, how we can help you DM or send me an email, or if it's a particular um, promo I have going on, then I'll invite them to go check out the promo by clicking in my bio, something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I need to get better at the CTAs. Um, I'm just quickly looking through the notes because I think the other thing is you you were saying you were saying and one of the things that you want to talk about is the power of IGTV. Do yes. you do you just want to dive a little bit into that and just talk to us about how you feel IGTV can really benefit anybody who wants to grow an audience? Yes, whether it's a personal brand or if they're an influencer or a blogger or you know just a normal person or a business owner or maybe they lead a team of people like an executive how IGTV can help you is, you know, it really builds that connection. People feel like they've talked to you already when you speak to them. So then everyone's at ease. Like let's say you're in sales and you have to do a lot of cold calls. Um, when they see you on IGTV, they feel like they know you. They feel connected. There's a common ground there because they've yeah. seen you on TV. You don't really know them, but they feel like they know you. Yeah. So that's the power of it. Really, you build that instant trust with whoever your viewer is, you can give them quick wins. That way they trust what you're saying and it really builds you up as the expert. And then the next thing is, yeah, if you're like, hey, how can I generate more leads? Definitely IGTV. Um, and you know, whether you remember the CTA or not, they get curious about what you've said. They yeah. might leave a comment underneath, they might not, but they're still gonna DM you um, or email you or try to contact you. If they really wanna contact you, they're gonna find a way. <laughs> So. Yeah, they will, they will, definitely, yeah. they'll find a way. And I think that's the good thing as well where um, you, you've got that option because obviously with Instagram, you the only way you can put in a link to a specific page or to your website is through your bio. Yes. Um, or if you've got, I think it's a 10,000 plus subscribers, you could do the swipe up. Yes. Um, so that's the other thing. But I think the, the, the benefit with IGTV is you can get the DMs. So people yeah. can just directly message you. So if your content is really good 
Um, and you know, if you really want to start building an audience on I and on IGTV or on Instagram, um, remember there's always that option where you can tell people at the end, as we were talking about a CTA, a call to action, and tell them to DM you. I, in other words, direct message you, and there is an option for that. So if your audience is still small and you can't make take advantage of the swipe up file, um, always put a link in your bio, which can take them there, or you can just tell them to direct message you, which is another good way in order to make sure that you use the power of Instagram. Um, and I was just looking here because I think the other thing we wanted to talk about is um, you were talking about, apart from the, 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 the power of IGTV, if, if some of my uh, the people in my audience or maybe some of the people that you work with say, well, I'm not really comfortable with starting to do an, a, a story or going on IGTV, what are the couple of tips that you can tell them about how they need to, what they need to say, or how they need to start up with it? So I would say before you get started recording, think about what people have asked you in the past. Um, what do your followers love to see from you? They can look at their insights at what their most popular type of posts are. Then they can go to the comments and see, well, what were people's reaction or what were people asking me? They can look at their DMs and say, well, what is a question someone keeps asking me all the time? Like, let's let's jump off of um, entrepreneurs. Let's talk about like a fashion blogger or something. They could say, well, what's a brand someone keeps asking me about? Or they keep asking me how to, you know, wear a blazer with jeans or something. Then you can make an IGTV showing different looks with blazers and jeans. And you can talk, have an IGTV opening a box from that brand. Or you can have an IGTV with... Um, you just talking about you know why you love that brand, what's so great about them, what makes them different. That way, your audience can know. Now, for an entrepreneur, same thing. You know, you want to look at what do people keep asking you about what they do, and then you'll notice there's a theme. It's either going to be they're asking you how what you do works, or how they can use it, or they're asking about not necessarily the price, but what's included, mm. or they're asking you kind of like how would it benefit them. Yeah. So then knowing those different types of questions they're asking, you can then decide, okay, this week I'm going to talk about this. This week I'm going to talk about that. This week I'm going to talk about that. And you can kind of make it like a series where it builds on top of each other. I was looking at my own because on mine it was like one week I was talking about, um, you know, client language. Or no, for, let, me, let me step back. So there was one week I was talking about why strategy was so vital. Then there was another week when I was talking about just start. Then there was another week I was talking about websites and logos. Then there was another week I was talking about a program that I had going on. Then I was talking about, you know, are you saying what your customer is thinking? Mm. Then there's something about um, strategy being vital. And then there was another one about consistently being vital. And then there was another one about mood boards and how, why you need a mood board. So I was just looking at mine. I haven't done those <laughs> But they have they have made a difference. I've seen it. Oh, I had a lesson about hashtags because oh, so many, amazing. Because so many business owners they are very very confused about Instagram, which we all get at times. But they do not understand hashtags at all. So I made mm. a cute little you know tutorial about hashtags and how to figure out what hashtags you should use. Um, and then I definitely explain how the latest one I did on August 13th was about, you know, strategy and why they need a strategy. Yeah. And how the strategy works all together, the public relations, the design, and the marketing, and the social media. You know, they, just like you said about not putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, Absolutely. they've got to make sure it's consistent everywhere. But, yeah, I talked about that. So it was kind of like a, it built on top of each other. Yeah. That way if someone's new to me. And just like with YouTube, this is what happens. When you have a little, you know, catalog for people to look at, they're mm -hmm. going to look at one video, then the next one, then the next one. They're going to, like, binge watch. Like on YouTube, they're going to binge watch. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what's cool. No, that's really good. And that's what we're going to do. So um, below this video, obviously, I'll have um, Erica's Instagram link there. So if you want to go and binge watch everything she's spoken about, mm -hmm. and all her videos, by all means, please go and have a look. I myself are going to go and have a look. Don't yeah. worry about that. Um, so no, I think we've really covered a lot. Is there anything in particular that you would like to share still with anybody? Is there anything in particular that you would still like to, to talk about IT, IGTV? So yeah, I would say that just 
Oh, another tip I would give, since you give me the opportunity to give a tip, just remember you're talking to just one person. No matter how many followers you have, you're talking to that one person. When it's just them and their phone, just one person. So that takes the pressure off. You can pretend you're talking to your best friend, and then you just you know look in the camera and you just get it started. Um, whatever tip you're going to share, you just pretend you're talking to your one friend. You don't even have to start it with "Hey, friend" or "How are you, friend." You don't have to do it like an intro. You yeah, can just yeah. dive right in because when you talk to your friend, you know you just dive right in. You might say hi, you might not. Um, I like to say my, start mine with "Hi, Erica here," and then I just go into what I had to say, and then I say bye or have a good day or I just you know end it with the CTA whichever one but yeah, yeah just really casual just like you just take a deep breath beforehand and then the cool thing about IGTV because it's not live you can record a few times and then if you say hey I didn't mean to say that or I said um too many times you can edit out certain parts Oh, okay, so, that's quite good. So it gives you the option at least to edit it out. <laughs> yes, and then um, they just added it to where you can upload from the computer too. So if you want to get super fancy and make it, you know, high quality, have transitions. I see people do that where they have a little intro with their logo in the beginning. You can do that too. You can make them as fancy or as casual as you want. So mm -hmm. another tip is if you already do Instagram Lives, you can actually save them to your phone and then add them as IGTVs. So that'll save you a step. So you can repurpose that content and you can break it up into smaller chunks if you want. Um, and then another tip would be to get it to show up on your feed as a preview, make sure your IGTV recording is more than an hour, or not hour, more than a minute long. That way it'll show up as a preview on the feed and you just tick the little box there. But yeah, that's all I wanted to share. No, that's amazing. Well, that's something I didn't know about, so it's a great tip. <laughs> yeah. IGTV is really cool in that no, way. Definitely. I'm, I'm definitely going to start using IGTV a lot, lot more. I want to see where this is all going. Now, yeah. I think in particular, um, what I would like to do is um, just say that Erica has got a fantastic freebie that she's giving away today, and it's a link to an IGTV guide plus 20 video ideas and I think it's a fantastic freebie so the link is below this video you can go you can get it there and um, I'm definitely gonna have a look because I really want to keep on going with IGTV and then also Erica's uh, website um, which is the epartnersmarketing.com that will be a link at the bottom of this video as well. So please go. If you feel you need a little bit more help with your business, if you don't have the time, you want somebody to start looking after your marketing and just having that creativity behind it in order to make sure that your branding is done to the correct standard and obviously that you're happy with, then by all means go and get in contact with Erica. Now Erica, I don't know about you, but I've absolutely learned so much. I'm so excited. I feel like I'm yeah. going to finish this video and go straight and do my first IGTV. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be awesome. No, definitely. I have absolutely loved it. Thank you so, so much. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Anything else that I need to link to for you? Oh no, that's it. That's it. Amazing. So um, with the um, the freebie, like I said, the freebie is below this video, the IGTV guide plus 20 videos um, or video ideas in particular in how to get started. So by all means, give IGTV a try. I'm going to do it as well. And um, why don't I give you all a challenge? So if you are starting out with your IGTV, why don't you copy in me and Erica? Like I said, just, um, you know, use our at um, yours is e partners marketing at e partners marketing, yes. and mine is at Henrietta Danell. So go and do a little challenge, try it out, and copy both of us in, and we go and we'll share it and we'll like it and we'll go thumbs up. Well done for giving it a go. So really, really appreciate it, Erica. It's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I'm really looking forward, and I'm going to keep you up to date and to tell you how my IGTV is going. <laughs> Yes, sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. You're more than welcome. And thank you so much for sharing all of the tips and everything else here today. Um, I'm really excited. And thank you again for your time as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.